Hi there, welcome to TCM and night 19 of 31 Days of Oscar, where every movie, 24 hours a day, is an Oscar winner or nominee, and where each movie is connected to the next by an actor in both pictures. We just had Sterling Hayden and director John Huston's 1950 film noir, The Asphalt Jungle. Up next, Hayden delivers an entirely different type of performance as he moves from a thief with a recognizable, even admirable code of ethics to a thoroughly insane Air Force officer whose delusions about himself and the world bring the planet to the precipice of nuclear war. From director Stanley Kubrick in 1964, Peter Sellers leads a cast spectacularly supported by Hayden and George C. Scott in a dark satirical comedy, Dr. Strangelove, complete title, Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. Final word about Hayden, one of the great actors of his generation in my mind. These men he plays in the asphalt jungle and Dr. Strangelove are so different, yet both possess one of the qualities Hayden consistently brought to his performances. You recognize his humanity, whether he's this likable principled thief in the asphalt jungle or this psychotic madman you're about to see in Strangelove. Hayden gets you to believe that everything the character does and says is true, at least to him. Okay, so Dr. Strangelove is this dark comedy from Stanley Kubrick who directed it and co-wrote the screenplay with Peter George and Terry Southern. Those two co-writers tell the story of the film's tonal transformation. Peter George's novel, Red Alert, served as the basis for the story. Kubrick read it as one of roughly 70 books he devoured about nuclear war. He was gripped by it and terrified of it. But Red Alert is no comedy. It's a serious story about how a simple human error and a computer glitch could lead to nuclear holocaust. But Terry Southern wrote funny. He was a satirist, even wrote for Saturday Night Live in the 1980s. Kubrick brought in Southern after realizing that much of the story was so crazy, so unbelievable that it became absurd. And Kubrick began to envision the picture as the dark satire it became. Kubrick earned his first three Oscar nominations here for directing, writing, and for Best Picture. From 1964, here's Peter Sellers playing three characters, also with Slim Pickens and James Earl Jones. Dr. Strangelove. Famously, director Stanley Kubrick did not want actors to change the script. He had every scene meticulously planned, so you didn't improvise much in a Stanley Kubrick movie. But Kubrick was first and foremost a filmmaker, so he recognized breaking his own rules could enhance the final product. And in this case, that meant allowing Peter Sellers to take his characters wherever he thought they ought to be going. Sellers, of course, had three roles, President Muffley, Dr. Strangelove, and his best, in my mind, Group Captain. Lionel Mandrake. Anyway, Sellers had the green light to improvise on any of his characters pretty much whenever he felt like it. And Sellers felt like it plenty, often leaving Stanley Kubrick laughing so hard he had tears in his eyes. Sellers earned a Best Actor Oscar nomination for Dr. Strangelove, though it seems like nominating him for three supporting roles might have made more sense. Coming up, Sellers connects us to our next movie, released the same year, playing Inspector Clouseau for director Blake Edwards in the original Pink Panther.